This one says, hey, the pump is broken, nothing comes out. Some lady trying to pump the tail of the cow. Well, today with the agenda, I have some cards that sold on eBay, one card on Etsy, zero on HIP again. My subscription comes up in July. Hopefully it gets better soon. Also got a special topic, kind of a elusive postcard. It's button face postcards. We'll get into that in a minute. And then I just got some fewer comments at the end. I added a couple since I don't have a poll or anything else to go over. But let's, let me go ahead and get started with the cards that sold. I sold 10 cards on eBay for $55. Now with this card here, this is what they call 1957 Goofy Series postcards. They're like two inch by three and a half inch cards. They're not as big as a regular postcard. They're smaller, as you can see here. They're smaller than a standard size three and a half postcard. Kind of a trading card stock on there, but it's from 1957. I do have a postcard back. They have the address, the stamp box, and a place for the message. And they have a canned message on there. This one says, hey, the pump is broken. Nothing comes out. Some lady trying to pump the tail of the cow. I bought 60 of these, the whole set. There was a whole set, there's 60 of them, from 1957 at an auction. Now, I didn't sell them as a set. I sold them individually. So if someone's looking for card number 53, that's the finished the set, I'm the guy. That's what I do when I buy the sets of cards. I break them up and I sell them individually, not lot them up. It's a longer tail, longer time to sell. But you make more money when you do that, and if you can have that option to do that. Next one, I sold two more of the boat prints. Same boat, USS Chilton APA 38. Two of those, that's that lighter cardstock, Continental eBay standard envelope. Sold for $10, two cards. Went, I still got a lot of those. Next one, whenever you see Zeppelins, airships, or whatever, this is the U.S. Navy airship. It says the U.S. Navy right on there. USS Macon SRS-5, World War II, is what it says right up there. Just a standard postcard. I got about 60 or 70 of these. This, I always price up about a dollar more for something like this. This sold for $5.55. Just one of them. Then I sold another ship boat, the Von Steuben. ID-3017, USS Von Steuben. That's an older ship. You can see the flags up on the top there and stuff. Black and white is what those prints are that they printed out. Lighter cardstock, continental size, $4.55. I sold a ditch. Yes, an irrigation ditch in Gridley, California. It's a ditch. Not sure why, but somebody put their inventory number right on top of there. But I sold a ditch, an irrigation ditch in Gridley, California. California. Let me see if I can put the name right up there, right there. Gridley, California. Just an older divided back card. Not a real photo postcard. It's been printed. Four fifty-five. Next one is Prospect Point. Look out at Prospect Point, Stanley Park, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Look at that Canadian card. Standard Chrome card. Four fifty-five. What can I say? And, and I sold on eBay the swimming pool from Tanglewood Park near Winston-Salem. This had a lot of stuff going on. Had the pool, had the people. It sold for about $5. Just a chrome card, not a white border. It's, you can see the glistening. It's a chrome. I mean, you can see the light bouncing off of it. But swimming pools, motels, universities. Pays the bills. Four fifty-five. Sold another one of those ship photos, six by three photos. This is the Silverstein DE-534, about ni circa 1958, $8.55. That doesn't go eBay standard envelope. And the last card I sold on eBay is Abraham Lincoln's wood cabin that he was born in. Just amazes me. Undivided back card, older card. I have a lot of these cards up different views of this building and this was the older one and sold for 455 nothing really special there's a lot of these out there 
and someone cherry picked my store and got that for $4.55. So that was 10 cards for $55. Sales have been up and down, some days 5, some days 20, some days 30, some days 1. You just never know. And then let me do the last what sold, and then we'll just keep moving through the video. Sold one card on Etsy, and that's it. And this is the San Francisco Maritime State Historical Park. It shows a trolley car, a cable car, by a turntable. This is down by the wharf, I think, if I remember right. Just a chrome card. Nothing really special about it. That sold for $4.65. I go up just a little bit higher on Etsy because of the fees. And that sold for $5. So it's 11 cards for $60 between Etsy and eBay. And I also sold an action figure. This is one of those 118 scale. It means they're not six inches long. It's a 118 scale Superman. I bought a whole case of these last year. I got about five of these left, four. And this sold for $25. So my total for everything for the day, $85. And during the week, that's not bad. The other day I sold $200 worth of action figures. And Yesterday I sold none, but I did downsize the toy store last year, so I don't expect the sales like I used. Plus, it's harder to get the action figures. Hasbro's been raising their prices. I've got stuff on pre-order from last year that they canceled, and I got pre-orders this year that were supposed to be here already, but they, they just don't have it. They're either on the ships or they're not making them. It doesn't work, so hopefully I get them by Christmas, but it's not as I used to. I used to buy cases and cases of them, but not that much anymore. Now let's get into this elusive postcard. Button face postcard. What do you talk about button face? The definition of button face postcard is a postcard where a button has been added for the face. And as you'll see here in the pictures, that's the definition. So they're not common postcards. I don't see them that often in the wild. I know the Pittsburgh Pickers got into the postcards and they contacted me and they were going through them. They showed me a button face postcard one time that they got in a lot at an auction. And I think they sold it for $20, $30. But I told them to put that to the side and do some research. There's not that many on eBay. But you want to look for the button face family postcards also by George Jarvis is the artist. If you want to say it's an artist or the creator of that. It's called button face family. So there's a mother, father, and different ones. So you want to check. George Jarvis out. People would attach a button to the postcard. Some I have seen were sewn on, but some are glued on. Just They're just attached to the face. Now there is commercially made new ones uh, that are common. What you want to look for is these older ones. They, they, they go for above average money. I searched eBay for button face postcard. And I only found 13 one day, and I found this morning I did it, and I had 17. Now this baseball player postcard, you see, will show up here in a minute in solds. But those are the button face postcard on there. Now I didn't find, since there's not a lot of them, I couldn't do the sold high, sold low, list high, list low thing I usually do. Because they run into each other, there's just not a lot out there. So here's what I found, is the sold ones... That I picked out three of them. The first one, the Mexican guy, $177.350 shipping. And that was Little Billy Button, Button Face by George Jervis. So he's part of the Button Face family. And that's why I said you want to look for that. Then here's the baseball player, Button Face Chicago Cubs Frank Chance, baseball postcard, $70, $80 plus 225 shipping. Button Face. Handmade Thanksgiving Sprite Climbing on a Pumpkin, $32 plus $375 shipping. As you can see, the older ones here, they demand more money. And all of these were buy it now, they weren't auctions. If you threw one of these into an auction, hopefully you get some, but I would start it with a price that you want on there. So if he threw this $100 Mexican guy with a sombrero out there, could he got $200 in the auction? Those are the chances. But I would start the auction at $90, $100. So if you have one bid, you still get your $90, $100. Then I looked at the ones that are listed. 1909 Button Face Miss Beatrice po Poetic Style Fun Antique 1900s Postcards. Wow, what a title. Did have it at $35.90, but they put 25 20% offer. 
So they got $28.72 for that card and free shipping. The next one, Button Face Handmade, Cheer Up, There Ain't No Hell, Girl with Butterflies. $24 plus $375, so $28. I don't think any of these are out of line. That top one, I think he could have probably got more, more for that one. And maybe all of these can get a little bit more. I would probably go a little higher. But all of these are right in line. They weren't, they're not bad. The titles could need a little work, but that's just personal opinion. Like the bottom one, Button Face, Handmade, Poem, Girl, Wedding Dress, and Yellow some Sunbonnet. They got Button Face right up front, but they're, they're just keyword title like that. But as you can see, these are elusive, and they also demand a good amount of money above your average card. So if you see those, but watch out for the commercially made current ones to, in the present, the newer ones. You want to find these older ones. So if you're looking through a lot, something sticks out with an attachment on there, button face. Do these have a crossover to add-on postcards? I think so, because the button's add-on, but they're called button face postcards to me. Who knew? Now don't forget, with Ko-Fi, our little Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, and I'll put the link down here, get your, you can download these cards. You can download them for free, a digital download, and print them out yourself. Or if you would like a copy of them on postcard stock, and this is the stamp box. It talks about a quick reference guide on stamp boxes. And this is the postcard errors that used to be in eBay. I think that's where I got it from. This one, I'm not for sure. But these are only $1.50, just the cost of the product. And 50 cents out of each one of these, and anyone you get goes to charity on there. But the digital ones are free. It's just a place for me to put them that I can point you to to go get. But Ko-Fi is the place to do it. You don't have to donate. Just put zero in there if you want, and then download them. But I want to remind people, because I have these ready to go, and I'll mail them out to you in an envelope. And then $1.50 covers the postage, the envelope, the ink, and $0.50 cents going to charity. Not a money maker for me. Just a place for me to get that stuff out there. Because a lot of people, I showed them one time on a video, and a lot of people asked me for that. And I was emailing them, and I think I was missing some people. This way I can just point them right to the link, and they can go get it as often as you want. Now since I got the what's sold done, I did the button face. I don't have a poll. I can go right into viewer comments, my favorite part. To randomly pull these up, uh, what pops up on there when I look at it. So the first one, a deal finder, said thank you for the video on quantity. If I have a multiple of a card, I place one up for sale. If it sells, and then I wait a while, maybe two months, and then place the second card up for the same or more, depending on content and market saturation level. <clears throat> I think this was a video where I was speaking about the ships. When I have a lot of ships, and I might have 500 of these cards, or 400, or 300 of this, let's say 300 of this card. A lot of people told me and recommended, that, hey, only put five up at a time, and then when they sell, put five more. I was going to do that, but then I was sitting there, I got 10,000, six to 10,000 listings in different boats. I don't want to do that every week and manage the, the quantity and count out the cards. and So what I did, and it's working out, if I had 300 of these cards, I'd do one listing for this card, and I would count every one of the cards, and I'd put exactly the quantity. So I'd put 300 in the quantity and just let, let it rip. Let eBay count it down, and when it gets down to about 10 or 15, I'll go in and make sure the count's right. didn't mess anything up. Some people say, well, you're not going to sell as many cards because people see how many you got. So far, it's been working out. But that's one model. This model that DealFinder is talking about is he holds back. So if he has five of the same card, he sells one. Then he holds back and puts another one up. And he holds back and puts another one, checks the market and stuff like that. With over 35,000 cards now, that just gets unmanageable for me to do. So I do one listing. I put the quantity in. been working for me. But some people want to do what deal finders do, which is fine if it works for you. But I, I like it where I don't have to worry about it. They're all in the boxes, and they just sell. It just keeps counting down to zero. Next question, or next comment. Paul, this from Paul. He just ran into a large lot of modern Hawaii cards that I had picked up since they were so cheap. Got to buy, buy them when you see them. They're six inches long, but four and a quarter inch wide. Too thick for the continental sleeves. I gotcha. 
I know where this is going. Do you ever run into those size? What do you do for sleeving? 5x7 is just a bit too large, especially for mailing in the standard Echo Swift envelopes. Hoping you might know about an in-between size, but I haven't found anything yet. So, this card here, let's say it's the same size as yours. It's just, it's close. It's a 6x4, but let's say, let's say it's on there. There is, I haven't found an in-between size between 6x4 and 5x7. So what I use is a 5x7 a sleeve, like that. And I just put it in there. And then I fold over the top. And I fold over the bottom to make it go. And then I put a piece of tape in the corner and in the bottom, just to hold, scotch tape, just to hold it. That way it will fit nicely into those envelopes when you do that it'll fit right in there right right in the envelope have not had any issues with that on there but a 5 by 7 sleeve folded over on the sides taped works fine now I every card I sell I put them in one individual sleeve I don't put multiple cards into one sleeve I don't reuse my sleeves that have the stickers on them by inventory either. Every customer will get a brand new sleeve so that it, goes, it can go right into their collection. It's a good presentation. They don't cost much, but that's how I got around that. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I, there, I, I didn't find a sleeve between six by four to five by seven. It's one or the other. If you find one, let me know, but I have a lot of five by sevens on there. But good deal on the Y cards, they should do well. It sounds like they're probably newer cards, but Hawaii, Caribbean Islands sell. Next one is from Striker20, longtime viewer of the channel. It says, nice data on the days of the week. That's the video I did where I'm tracking since the first of the year, and I'll do it throughout the year and update in the videos every so often, the percentage of cards that sell per month and the percentage of cards that sell every day, Sunday through Monday. Right now, Wednesday's winning. Wednesday and Saturdays are the days people buy from me the most. Every month is kind of steady, 30%, 35%. But we're going to see about this summer slowdown, as people talk about. I'm going to have real data from my store to show you. This isn't guessing what the algorithm's doing. This is actual data showing you what people are doing and buying from me. Now your data could be totally different because you got totally different cards or how many cards you have or just different so many variables but it'll give you a baseline. But he said please keep us updated throughout the year to see if it ends up this way. Absolutely Shriker. You'll see them in the videos every so often I'll replace it with a poll and talk about the updates. I don't want to do it every month because one big order can throw off the numbers but as we grow through the year it should start leveling out getting a good average across with the data but I'll, I'll probably do it at the end of every month or every two months especially the three months six months nine months and 12 months for sure but i think it's going to just be a nice steady line i don't think you're going to see the big drops like you do in clothing and some of the other things so thanks for your comment striker then biff biff says embossing doesn't mean anything <laughs> I'd say 75% of holiday cards are embossed. I couldn't say it any plainer. That was my question from the do embossed postcards. Does it really mean anything? I'm kind of with Biff. There's so many embossed things. Some people just collect them like one person said. But I don't think it really adds that much value to postcards. Unless it's very, very special. But yeah, a lot of holiday postcards are <laughs> embossed. And remember what embossed is, it's a raised surface that has an indent on one side and a raise on the other. And there's medium embossed, light embossed, heavy embossed. They have add-on stuff on it and stuff like that. But it's kind of a interesting field as postcards. There's so many options. You can sit there and think about all the different things that might sell a postcard. But when it actually comes down to what sells a postcard, the subject that's really what the people are looking for a memory a picture from the past 
like this. Somebody that likes flowers. Yeah, I got flowers to put up there. You know, that's what's going to sell the postcard. A lot of people read too much into them, but my bit, most of my postcards that sell are Chrome postcards, written or used or unused, unposted, and that's what I found with my data. As Paul was talking about those six by four continental cards, the bigger cards, they're bigger than the standard card. A lot of people ask me why. Well, in this video here, I actually uncover what these large postcards, what's, what's underneath these, and why did they do that? And why did they call them continental? There is a reason. And also it goes over to jumbo postcards, the big postcards that I, I don't deal with. I have some, but I don't sell them. Check that video out. That's all I got for today. Good luck out there, and I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>